Hello and welcome to the Self Empowered Podcast. I'm your girl, Abby, and today I'm going to be talking about you. Okay, so by that, what I mean is that we're going to go through a few processes where you get to be able to connect back into who you really are using, you know, stepping into like a childlike state of mind, coming in and just going back to basics and just really going to your root and finding out who you were, who were you as a child, what were your dreams, what was that playful mindset, you know, like when we 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 become adults and everything becomes so hard let me know if you felt that before if you felt that it's so hard or really challenging or you're like oh i've got all these things i need to do stress 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 you know all of that and and i think i've mentioned this before that it was like when someone asked me what do i like to do for fun or what is my favorite music or you know something like that i'm like Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I like to do for fun. I don't know what type of music I like. I don't know what makes me smile. You know, is kind of the first response that our conscious mind wants to give to be like, oh, well, if I just say I don't know, then the answer's not wrong. Let me know if you felt this before. You know, that little perfectionist, that good girl, that yes, yes, sir, you know, kind of comes in and, and is like, I don't know, why don't you tell me what, what my favorite music is? And I'll be like, okay, yeah, sure. I love that type of music. <laughs> you know, so often we we come into into life and we are grown up with everyone's kind of beliefs and their values and their opinions and their thoughts and their likes and their dislikes and you know we're kind of putting on all these shells as we're trying to find out who we are as a person ourselves now this oh I mean this I see this happening so in so many women you know I myself was like this also where you kind of didn't know what your true identity was Okay, I didn't know who Abby was. I didn't know what she stood up for and and what she liked. So that's where today's episode is coming from. And it's module two in the Self-Empowered Goddess program that I have. Now, if you want to grab yourself a copy of that, let me know. I'll post the the links in the comments. Um, You can grab that today. It's It's an online program where I've got videos where I'm taking you through each of the modules. We also have some hypnotic meditations as well to take you through and really amplify on an unconscious level all of the learnings. So today we're going to go through the story of me. And as I mentioned, it's really important to reflect back on your dreams and your desires when you were younger okay this allows us to tap back into that childlike state that creates that playful mindset and this state is what brings us our biggest satisfaction okay so studies have shown that this produces a positive hormone response so when we step into our childlike state we're releasing positive hormones okay like simple right connect into a childlike state release happy hormones, you know, instead of just going down that survival mode and being in stress and and adulthood, if that that makes sense, positive, childlike state of mind, positive hormones, okay? So when you're in that playful mindset, it's essential in order to keep everything, you know, to be creative and feel alive. Now, as I mentioned in the Self-Empowered Goddess program, it does have the hypnotic meditation. So, This one, I recommend doing the goddess of communication. So this is where on an unconscious level, you get to really embody and empower yourself as someone who listens and communicates effectively to others and to yourself. You get to ask better questions. You gain better answers. You share your wisdom, your guidance, um, you know, compassion and love. So it really helps on that unconscious level. So by working with the unconscious mind, I'm just going to take a little side step that this so as I've mentioned before our conscious mind only makes up five percent of our decisions okay 95 percent of our decisions are made up by our unconscious mind so our conscious mind is that one in the front that says I want to be positive I want to be empowering I want to be you know less anxious I don't want to be stressed all of this um you know but then our unconscious mind is saying like no 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 we need to be anxious because that keeps us safe we need to be you know in our bubble because that keeps us safe like no 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 
no, no, no. And it, it's, you know, that's that's our unconscious mind's job is to keep us safe. However, it doesn't realise that what we're facing in, in everyday world now compared to when we were back in the olden days, like in the caveman days. So in the caveman days, our, our body would be triggered to, you know, a lion chasing us. So our conscious mind would just be like, ah, lion. And our unconscious mind would go, okay, be safe. This is what we need to do. So, but now in the real world, we don't have lions chasing us all the time. However, we still react in that survival mode to things, you know, to emails, to work stresses, to the kids, anything like that that kind of gets us out of that creative mindset and into like, <laughs> I can't think of a better word to explain it, but into that, you know, heaviness and that stress and that, ugh, that yuck burnout mindset. So, our unconscious mind is like, ah, oh, that's a tiger, that's a lion, I need to keep you safe. Where consciously we're like, no, that's just an email. But so by using the hypnotic meditations and tapping into that unconscious mind to let it know that it's safe, it's like you want to let your unconscious mind think that it's, it's, it, it is its own idea that it wants to be confident. Does that make sense? Um, so you're kind of telling it like, oh, unconscious mind, that's such a great idea that you want to ask better questions. Yeah, cool, let's do that. I don't even know if this is making sense, but <laughs> let's just go with it. I'm having fun. We're in a childlike state of mind right now. Okay, so what we're going to do first is it's the story of me. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen and, you know, I'm giving you the opportunity to think about you. Okay, so grabbing your pen and paper and I'm going to begin a sentence and then I want you to write the rest of it, okay? And we're going to do it really quick, all right? So we're not going to allow what this is by doing it kind of quickly and not sitting there for days, weeks, months or years is we're going to get the unconscious mind to just go bleh. All right, so let's just get it out. Let's just do it. You know, I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear. This is all about you. Like I mentioned again, it, it's not about anyone else's reflections or anyone else's story. This is all about you. So let's start. I'm going to play some music and let's jump into it. My favorite things to do are, so just writing that at the top of your page, my favorite things to do are, and I want you to just list what your favorite things to do are. Let's go. And you can just repeat it as well. My favorite things to do are, let's go. Okay, so the next one, how did you find that? Was that good? Yeah, pretty easy, right? So the next one that we're going to write is, when I was younger, I always wanted to. So what are some of the things that you wanted to do when you were younger? So when I was younger, I always wanted to. one I am happiest when so just writing I am happiest when and just doing another brain dump of all the things that you are happiest for you know when, when they're happening I am happiest when I love that one. 
The next one that we're going to write is things I am great at. So just writing down all the things that you are great at. And, you know, they could be great at washing the dishes, great at gardening, great at giving hugs, great at dancing, great at speaking my truth, great at being empowered, you know, writing down all the things that you are great at. Let's go. And the last one for the story of me section is I love it when. So I want you to write down all the things that you love. And it could be something like I love it when my dog listens to me (laughs) or I love it when my husband makes dinner or I love it when I have a, a client who gets massive results you know what is it that you love so just writing I love it when let's go I'm so proud of you. Well done. Now, I just want to acknowledge you and I want you to acknowledge yourself as well that, you know, sometimes going through that process can feel a little bit uncomfortable. Let me know in the comments. Did you feel a little bit uncomfortable doing that or did it come at ease? What did you see? What did you, you know, when you look at all the things that you love and and what you loved when you were younger and, and what you're great at, how does that make you feel inside? Let me know. Are you feeling really... I feel really warm and fuzzy when I do this, um, you know, and it's kind of like at first I'm, I'm a little bit like, oh, you know, like, oh, i got to focus on me. This isn't what I'm used to. I'm used to, you know, just like focusing and giving on giving to other people. And now it's like, OK, let's turn it back on me. All right. Let's see what I love and what I do. And when you kind of go through that process, it's like, oh, all right, cool. So what I want you to do on the next one. So turning your page and this is my current favorites. Okay. And you can definitely have a lot of fun with this one. This is an opportunity of you to take a snapshot of your life in this current moment and write down some of your current favorites, such as like your favorite books or your favorite songs, movies, places to be, colors, influences, sports, whatever the list goes on. Okay. So I think as I've mentioned earlier, but I might mention again, you know, there's no scale. So there's no wrong or right of what your current favorites are. It really comes down to what is a favorite for you specifically. So please don't feel like because someone else has written something, you know, has written A, then, you know, that must be better than yours or yours mustn't be a favorite. You know, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Just worry about your current favorites, okay? Anything that makes you smile, anything that you want to capture, that you want to remember is absolutely perfect because this is about you. This is the story of you. Now, you might be thinking, I don't have a favorite book because I don't read books or I don't have a favorite show because I don't watch TV. Now, what I want to ask you is in this moment, give yourself permission to open your mind and think outside of your box and have some freaking fun. Let's go. You now is the day of technology. You know, a book can be in the form of audio or digital, you know, so you might not read books like physically have books, but you may listen to them. So, you know, just writing that down or just another idea, um, you know, just getting a little bit more creative. What is maybe you read journals or you read articles or newspapers or magazines, you know, or maybe you have a favorite recipe book, you know, opening your mind outside of the box of just like a traditional hard copy book and just thinking about other things, you know. So if you want to change it from my current favorite books to 
current favorite thing to read or to listen to or to learn from okay if you're going to use this process say with a show so like say if you're saying i don't watch tv so maybe you have a favorite youtube channel or you listen to a podcast whatever it is okay so just write that down as perfect for you and you know if you do feel that some of these things don't resonate with you that's fine just skip it it's cool like you don't have to follow all the rules this is this is about you but what i don't want you to say is something like oh i don't know i don't know that line. I don't know. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, it's kind of something that people tend to say because it's, I guess, like a a safe answer. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what my favorite book is, or I don't know what my favorite color is, or I don't know what my favorite way to relax is. Okay. So this is where it's, it is that fun because we get to see one, you get to acknowledge and just see like, wow, how quickly you start saying, I don't know. And then you get to really train that muscle and train your mind to dig deep and go, hang on a minute. No, what do I know? What what color do I, what is my favorite color? And if you don't know, it's like, all right, well, let's, let's get out all the favorite, all the colors and let's see which one I like the best. It's, it's a really, it might seem so simple, but it's so powerful. And when we're lacking self-worth and self-love, that's where these simple things can get pushed aside or just feel like they're not important because we're thinking, you know, like it doesn't matter what my favorite color is because I need to get dinner on the table for the kids. Do you know what I mean? Does that resonate? So this is where you're really allowing yourself to take that permission to go back and find one or a thousand different favorites, you know, just fill up the page. We'll go through this and we'll just write down all of your favorite things, okay? So like I mentioned, um, you know, writing down, what is your current favorite book? I'm just going to play some music. What is your current favorite song? And you can come back to this as well. Current favorite movie? What is your current favorite show? What is your current favorite game? What is your current favorite food? favorite drink your current favorite place to be favorite way to relax what's your favorite color what's your favorite season do you like winter summer spring autumn what do you love to learn about who's your favorite celebrity who's your favorite influencer and is there someone that you're seeing on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or whatever and you're like, yeah, I really like what message they have to share. Or maybe you don't. What's your favourite band? Your favourite sport? Fantastic. Well done. Let's just... Whew, let's just give ourselves a clap. Let's give ourselves a massive hug because... That's huge. Well done. Well done for going through this process. Now, the next thing I want to go through is who am I? So while we're on the topic of finding out your identity and who you are and what you love, uh, we're going to go through who am I? So this encourages you to write down who you are and what you want in life. It's really important to identify what your life principles are, as well as the things that you want to focus on, what you want to do, learn and become in life. You see, we identify who we are and what we do and learn and become in life as we're communicating to our unconscious mind. So after you've had, after you've completed this section, I invite you to look back and reflect and ask yourself, is this really who I am? Is this really what I want to do? Is this what I want to learn and what I want to become in life? Or is this the voice of someone else? So like I mentioned earlier, so often we can take on the beliefs and the values of someone else as our own, you know, such as our parents or our friends. And when we reflect back and replace any beliefs that are not ours with our true beliefs, that's when we really start to become aligned with our authentic self. This naturally increases your self-worth. We become more calm, more confident and self-empowered. Okay, so super excited. Who is excited for this? So what we're going to do on this page is I have six sections that we're going to go through. So I'm going to play a little bit of music again. And on the first, first we're going to write, what do I want most in life? 
So just allowing yourself, let's take a breath. Let's take four conscious breaths. So taking a nice deep breath in. And out. And in. What do I want the most in life? He's writing it down. Wonderful. Now the next thing we're going to ask, what are the life principles I'd like to live by? A few examples. Maybe you want to love more. Maybe you want to practice mindfulness. Maybe you want to let go of worry or fear. So what are the life principles you want to live by? Now the next thing you're going to write is a list of things I want to do, learn and become in life. So what are some of the things that you want to do, learn and become in life? How do I feel most days and how do I want to feel instead? So just connecting in and writing down, how do you feel most days? Let's get real. Let's get raw. How do you feel most days? And how do you want to feel instead? lucky last who has the greatest impact on my life and why so just writing down who has the greatest impact maybe there's been a mentor or a teacher or a friend or a family member someone in your life that's had a really big impact it may have only been into your life for a short amount of time or a long amount of time they may still be in your life who is it who's had a greatest impact and why? Fantastic, welcome back.
So what we have here and what we've just achieved in this last, what, 25 minutes is the the key foundations to taking that first step in connecting with yourself and recognizing, you know, who you are, what your favorite things are. And, you know, it's not about what everyone else thinks and it's not about everyone else's beliefs and everyone else's value. This is about you and really connecting deep into yourself and becoming empowered. And that's what I'm so passionate about. I'm so passionate about helping women and helping anyone really to just come back to who they are, removing those those layers of everyone else's beliefs, everyone else's words, everyone else's fears, and just coming back to your pure self. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.